Hello students, today we are revising the reading and the writing section. So, as soon as you will get your question paper in the exam, you will first face the questions from the reading section. From the reading section where you will have two comprehension passages, one, uh, one will be factual and the other, uh, other one will be discursive. So, after that you will have the writing section where you will have the analytical paragraph as well as the letter writing. It can be an order or an enquiry letter. First let us see the reading comprehension. So in the reading comprehension what will be the content that will be provided to you. So this section will have two unseen passages. There will be two. The arrangement within the reading section will be the first one will be the factual passage which will have some graphs or it will have a data, a factual data, a true data of around 300 to 350 words and it will have 8 very short questions with it. It can be 5 and you will have to read the paragraph and then you have to get the answer. You will have to read the questions, then the paragraph and then you have to connect both of them and the most appropriate answer that is correlating with the question will be your accurate one. Then next you will have the discursive passage which may have a topic or may have a combination of two to three topics and then after that you will have a certain number of questions which will be testing your interference your evaluation and analysis and then mainly your vocabulary, okay. Now, what are the guidelines? How do you have to attempt these questions? You have to read the passage firstly thoroughly and your reading should be very quick. You don't have to sit for 15-20 minutes with that passage. I am reading the passage and then I will find the answer. No, read it very quickly, be thorough with it. Then focus on the relevant details and use a pen or a pencil and underline them. Then the next one, next point says read. Now after reading the passage, ultimately we will go to the question part. So read the questions carefully and then go back to the passage. Then the answers are generally in a logical sequence. Some of you make a mistake. What do you do? You read a question. Wherever there is a similar word, you write the answer as it is. Take care of the seventh point that is written. Change the sentence, change the tense of the answer statement in accordance to the question. If the question, pa, poo, uh, the question that is in past and the answer you are writing as it is it is given in the paragraph in the present in the future when the question is asking you in the past the answer has to be in the past okay now, uh, next is try to write the answer in your own words do not copy paste the information from the extract that is given to you okay just try to frame the answer just add on some good words in enhance your vocabulary while writing okay to find the answer to the vocabulary, mainly we face a problems with antonyms and synonyms. So here what we have to do is we have to see if the word that is given to us, we can replace it with the word in the extract and if the meaning of that word and it is similar to the one that is correlating to the extract, you are getting the meaning same way, both wise with that word also that is being asked and the one that is already given in the passage. If they are correlating then the answer is correct and you can take it. Then next is letter writing. Now after doing the analytical paragraph next you will move to letter writing. Now of course you know that there are two types of letter that you are going to be asked. It may be three. The order letter the cancellation of order letter or the inquiry letter. So first we let us see the order letter along with this I will tell you the cancellation of order letter because it is similar just few words are to be changed. So first is the sender's address this may or may not be given in the question but you are not allowed to write your own address that you already know. Then the date now how the date will be for example if your exam is on 27th so it would be 27th April and then 
2022. Kindly do not write it like 27 oblique 4 oblique 22. Please don't do it like this. Okay, this is a wrong format. Then the manager, whosoever you are writing the letter, the manager of the company, then the name of the company to whom you are placing an order to, then the address where it is, then subject, placing an order. Now, whatever your order is for stationery, for clothing, okay, for furniture, anything you want, then dear sir or madam. Body of the letter. Now, what will be the body of the letter? Body of the letter always starts with you always have a telephonic conversation with the person you are going to place an order to. Okay. So, you always have a communication. So, usually we start the letter with in reference to the communication or conversation we had on so and so date. So, that date has to be mentioned in particular. Then, what would you like to place an order for? So, list of items. These children we mostly write in a tabular way. Here we write the serial number. Then we write what all things do we want. Then we write the quantity. And if you are asking for a book or you are asking for a notebook, so we write the publisher's name. Okay, so there are four columns. The serial number, the things or the books to be ordered, their quantity and if the publisher's name is given. Now, the date on which you expect the delivery. When do you want the delivery actually? Okay. Then the mode of payment, whether it will be an online payment mode or an offline payment mode. Now, you have to tell them certain conditions that the things that you are sending, the items that you are ordering for, they have to be delivered in a proper way, in good condition. Okay. If you are ordering for books, they should not be outdated. Okay. And... Uh, as per your requirements. If you are asking for 10 quantity of some book, it should be 10, not more than that, not less than that. Then you give a complimentary close that is a complimentary close that is yours faithfully. Most of the time we use this only. Then your name and your designation. For whom, if you are a librarian of the school, you will mention your designation here, librarian. Okay, if you are asking uh, as a head of any department, so you will mention the, uh, if you are asking for English books here, so you will mention the head of English department and the address will automatically be present here. So, you need not uh, write the address again and again. So, this is the format of order letter and if it is a uh, cancellation order, here just we are going to change, what are we going to write here then? Cancellation of the order okay then you can give the reference number it would be the same just here you now you will not write as per the conversation now you will write as per the order bill number or the reference to the order number then you will give here and then again the same table you will make that these things i ordered but now i want to cancel it because of the late delivery or you have uh, got some negative reviews about the company so you are cancelling the order okay the entire format remains the same now next after this we have format of inquiry letter now what is the format of inquiry letter inquiry letter mostly we inquire about certain things for example if you know you are passing your uh, uh, intermediate school so, then you are going to college. So, you want some certain information or randomly you just uh, went through a newspaper and you have seen an advertisement about a yoga classes, a Bacchus classes and you want to join those classes for a certain time period. So, you inquire about that particular batch, about that particular classes, what are the fee structure, what are the timings and for that you need a proper format. So, here we will write the sender's address, the one who is sending the date again the date format will be same as earlier now the principal or the dean or the person who is conducting that classes the name of the institute to whom we are addressing and the address the place okay the city and state here we write then subject inquiring about so and so uh, batch or inquiring about so and so program dear sir or madam then the body of the letter this is the paragraph one as per the advertisement published in the local daily regarding whatever you are asking about, I need to make certain queries. Okay, I wish to 
make certain queries what is will the duration of the course whether it will be 2 months 3 months and year 6 months then fee structure if you are going uh, for an uh, uh, we, uh, we can say hotel management, you, you are going for a hotel management course. So, you want to know about each and every detail because you will be requiring an accommod accommodation, uh, traveling, food and uh, related things you want there, okay, hostel facilities. So, you will ask for the duration, what is the time period, what is the fee structure, the number of students per batch, uh, if the quantity is more we expect the quality to be less. So, you just want to inquire about these things then accommodation and transportation facilities. Most of the time this becomes an important point. Then after this para 2 starts which says I will be grateful to you if you could send me the brooches along with the enrollment form so that I can register in the course at the earliest without any delay. So, here we are just making a pleasure or uh, we can say a pleasure greeting or we can say here we are just trying to uh, ask for the person to reply to us at the earliest. Now after this again the complimentary close your faithfully and your name your designation is not required here because you are yet a student or a person who is just inquiring to a principal or the manager of the institute. Now after this the last question you will have in the writing section after that the literature part would start. So, the right analytical paragraph is the last question you will see. The analytical paragraph shall be divided into three parts when you are any time it can be a pie chart children which says you have been given different data. It can be a graph, a histogram, anything. It could be anything, it could be a uh, written pa uh, paragraph or data, okay, written in a form of paragraph. So, anything that is allotted to you, you have to read it thoroughly, you have to see the graph or the digits, the numeral forms very carefully and then you have to segregate that into three different sections. First will be your introduction. Now, what will you write in the introduction? In the introduction, you will explain in two or three lines. Sometimes children just, uh, the students, they just uh, write a single line and try to finish it. No, take two, three lines and write about the subject of the given data. What is allotted to you? Okay. Then the body. Body says the detailed explanation of what you have seen in the graph and what you can conclude with that. So, here you will write about the graph, what is given, what differences you can see, what is the comparison or the contrast, what are the relevant figures provided to you and then you can subdivide it into a different paragraph. For example, um, here you have written body. Number one, you have written uh, the introduction. So, here one paragraph of two, three lines you have written in introduction. Then number two, you can write three lines and then again you can change the paragraph. Okay, you can subdivide the body into two or three paragraph according to your wish. Then the next one says, the conclusion. Now, what is a conclusion? Conclusion means what did you actually summarize or what did you actually see in the given figure. So, here you have to give a concluding paragraph of at least three lines with the overall view or summary of the graph. Okay. So, this is actually the most easy, uh, easiest thing to do. What I prefer is, but if you are confused that whether I will be able to write a proper summary, some children make grammatical errors. So, please avoid doing that. Grammatical errors can be avoided in the reading section, not in the writing section. So, please try to uh, you know, summarize things or you can write it very precisely but do not try to change tenses again and again within the paragraph, okay? So, children, these are the certain guidelines I just wanted to remind you. Now, I hope your preparations would be far better than what it was earlier and all the best for your exams. Do well.